coisas que me mandam. And welcome on a Tuesday night, the 29th of August, I almost said September 2023, to the David and Chuck Show here on ENET Sports and the Tuscola Football Network. Uh, good evening, Chuck. How are you down there in Winston-Salem? Always well, doing well. Um, how are you? I'm not too bad. Been a long day. It was wet. Uh, uh, real quick before we get going, you see top right corner, this is brought to you by by Crompton's Auto Mart, and uh, Wayne got rid of a beautiful 2017 Honda van today, or excuse me, Nissan van today, and uh, uh, man, just a great deal out in the rain, and uh, so CromptonAuto.com, we kind of get that out of the way, and we'll talk about it again, and then uh, Saturday on the, the Jonathan Crompton Show with Tuscola Football, uh, you and Jonathan are going to be drinking coffee. That's all I'm going to say about that. But you'll be drinking coffee with one of our new sponsors. I heard it's outstanding coffee. Yeah. You know what? It got the it got my mama's seal of approval. If you knew my mother, if you knew mama, uh, anything that she doesn't make is really not that good. Uh-huh. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And Janet, Janet, and uh, Janet, and Mama went up there on uh, was it Sunday last, right? Yeah. And today it's Orchard Coffee in downtown Waynesville, and the report from my mother was this is as good as you can get in Paris. Wow. So you and John, well, we and, got a good sponsor and, and, then. We have a great sponsor to go along with with, with what with uh, with my place, Crumpton's Auto Mart, and uh, we're we're going to really delve into that on uh, Saturday and and uh, all that good stuff. So anyway, welcome, 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 and uh, man, can I tell you what happened Friday night at the ball game? Yeah. Before we keep going and we start breaking down last week, kind of going over the the, the records and uh, who's got what this week. Uh, so the Mountaineers are playing, uh, the Wolverines and, uh, it was hot to say the least. Okay. Uh, I mean, it was, oh God, it was brutal hot. And through the first three quarters I sat and, uh, I thought I did a really good job of, uh, just kind of minding my own business and sitting up there with Mike and Brian and uh, fourth quarter start and they're down 13 or so. Uh, I don't, and I said, I can't leave Janet over there. If things go bad, I need to be over there with my wife. So I stand up and I said, you know, I got, and finally after all these decades, I got smart enough, Chuck, to go get one of those chairs, you know, the stadium chair. We've never had one all these years. So yeah. we got a stadium. And I got up and I said, well, I'll just go put it in the truck. About halfway down to the truck, I turned around and I looked at the scoreboard and it was like God took his thumb and said, uh, let me show you what tension is. And literally my, my, my back locked up, my leg quit working, pain shot through me. Uh, so I have spent since Friday night, uh, thank you, Tuscola Mountaineer football team and, and, uh, you guys uh, put the old man through the ringer. I had to go to the chiropractor for the first time in my life this morning. Crack. Just saying. Just saying. Oh, yeah. So now I, he has me on a regular schedule uh, because uh, he said, uh, I don't know uh, that a human could get that tense. <laughs> I'm in a knot. But anyway, uh uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go back and talk a little bit. Uh, we reviewed everything Saturday, but we'll go back and talk a little bit. You and I'll talk about that. Uh, the, the Tuscola Polk game, which was a phenomenal football game, but, uh, Hey, mountain seven conference last week. Uh, let's, let's start 
with uh, just you know, and, and we're going to quickly review these games and, and not spend a ton of time on them, but but just kind of review them. Uh, Pisgah and Inca, fifty six to three, the Bears over the Jets. Right. Uh, it was forty two to three at uh, at halftime. And uh, it was obviously there's not much you can say is that Mike Sexton at Inc. has got a lot of things to work on. And he's the right man um, uh, to do that. Uh, but Brett Chapel had his team dialed in. Brett Chapel had his team dialed in. And uh, so that was it was all Pisca that that night. And they, they play that rivalry all the time. But, you know, yeah. And is that Brett Chapel had his team dialed in in that game, and and they and, and they played really well. They're in. Uh, we'll go over them, but they're two and zero at this point. Uh, Swain and Smokey, fourteen to ten. Swain over Smokey. Right. We didn't know how this one. You know, we were kind of going back and forth last week. Swain. We uh, did. There are two football teams, two well-coached football teams, Coach Holt at Swain County, and then uh, Ricky Brindley, uh, one of our favorites at, at Smoky Mountain. And um, it just came out on top, you know. I mean, Swain walked into, um, you know, Silva and um, and took down the Mustangs in their uh, season opener at home, home opener. And so Swain uh, jumps, you know, goes up to 2-0, and and uh, but they're not in our conference. But Smoky Mountain goes to one and one in conference play. Yep. East Henderson uh, loses to Andrews, uh, fifty-four thirty. Uh, they scored twenty-four, and uh, East scored twenty-four in the fourth quarter. I guess that was a running clock, and and just kind of subbed out. So I, I I don't know if that thirty is well, really. Here's the thing that you have to look at East Henderson is that they, in two games, they've scored 66 points combined total in, in, in the two games. They've given up 101 points. They can score, and it may be that they're scoring late in the game. I do know against North Buncombe in the opener, they jumped up on North Buncombe in the first half and put a lot of points on. They just couldn't hold off North Buncombe. So it appears, yeah. based on that scenario, that they scored a lot of points last week in uh in the second half and a lot in late in the second half is that um you know they may have some defensive that but uh obviously they're a threat offensively yeah will you call him yeah mm-hmm. uh and and, and we are going to find out soon won't we yes we will and west henderson 44 hendersonville 0 and you know again i I'm just learning about a lot of the players and teams, but I know more about West Henderson than, than anybody, uh, maybe even including our guys at this point, and that won't be for long, but uh, uh, kickoff is it set? I, the kickoff is it set? I let me real quick. Kickoff, let, let me real quick. Kickoff is at seven, and we'll, we'll – Friday for, for Tuscola and McDowell. I just real quick before uh, I, my COVID brain kicks in. But anyway, go ahead with the West and here in Seville. I'm sorry, yeah, Chuck. I apologize. You know, obviously, they've uh, their opponents are 0 and 4, so they have uh, they've had uh, you know they've scored a lot of points. Uh, again, they took on North uh, Newton Conover in the opener, and and uh, Newton Conover hasn't had a winning season. They've been three and seven back to back years, and then four and six so they've been behind the eight ball for the last three years but west henderson went down there and put a lot of points on there poke we know the story with poke they were one and oh going into last yesterday and and they had a they had a, a, a they had a dog fight you know, with the mountaineers so uh, poke's a good football team they got uh, two playmakers out on the edge and you know, they can they can run and they can catch and if, yeah, you, know, and, and you gotta have some people to, to yeah, and, and the kid so, back there pulling the trigger for them plays really well, makes good decisions, throws the ball well, uses his feet well. But anyway, so, uh, go ahead. Yeah, Pope, you know, Pope's going into uh, West Henderson 1-1 one and one and West Henderson 2-0, and oh, and so I suspect that is going to be a tussle. Yeah. I think Pope and, a good game. I think uh, at this point, uh, you know, going going back again and reviewing Friday night is I'm just a little uh, 
Franklin being 0-2 is kind of foreign to me. You know, now they've played two good football teams. They've played Murphy and Robbinsville, and that's two good football teams. But, I, you know, I, I, I would I always think that the Mountain 7, you know, you're you – know, we, we, I don't know. I'm kind of shocked. Well, Murphy, you know, we, we discussed that they lost 90% of their offensive production. Uh, last year, great quarterback, uh, receivers, and and then the, the great run, you know, the very good running back. So they were looking to the youth movement, and they got great coaches. The Brooks brothers are great coaches down at Franklin, but sometimes oh, I mean, yeah. you can't go out and recruit. You got to take what is yours, and they got to build. And it may take a year or two for Franklin to get back, but they've been uh, toting it. You know, the first two games, Murphy was forty-one fourteen. That was at home. They went on the road to Robbinsville and lost 26 to nothing. So playing Robbinsville, a talented Robbinsville on the road and losing only 26 to nothing, maybe they're starting to find their their legs up, you know, on the defensive side, but they got some offensive issues that they're going to have to answer, you know, get fixed. And then, yeah, and, and uh, you know, North Henderson has played really well early. They're 2-0, and uh, uh, you know, I, I know Beatty's going to do a good job. He to me, you know, he's one of the finer offensive line guys in the mountains. Uh, did a great job when he was at TC Robertson. Did a great job at Mars Hill, uh, working with Coach Surratt uh, as 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 his line coach before he decided he wanted to go back in the, into the high school ranks as the head coach. So so Jim's got them playing really 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 well out there in Edneyville. So again, as we've said the first three weeks, Chuck, this conference. Is I think this conference overall, top to bottom, is much better than uh, last year, and probably much better than most people think. I would agree. Um, you've got Pisca, Tuscola, West Tennyson, North Tennyson by way of what they've done in the first two games. Smoky Mountain will get their answers correct. You know, get their situation corrected. And um, so, you know, you're going to have four or five teams contending for the top spot. There's only one team that can win that top spot. Yeah. And so be interesting uh, when they dive out and play that, you know, they'll have. Again, I I agree totally with what you say. We're going to learn a lot this weekend. And, uh, you know, well, hey, look, the the four pre-conference games, are are you going to be better? after game four going into conference than you were uh, before game one. That's the, that's the goal. You want to win every game you play because that RPI, you know, I use that word. I don't know if that's applicable to the state, but the RPI, your, th- your strength of schedule, all that things, all that comes into play when, when playoff time comes around. So uh, anyway, Friday, last Friday, real quick, before we delve into this week's schedule, uh, I, it was rainy today, uh, down at the shop and, and not a lot of people wanted to get out and, and look at vehicles and w- there's a lot of advantages and there's some disadvantages to owning your own business. But one of the advantages is on days like the day I was able to sit down and watch. Uh, I wish I had access to the, to the film, but, uh, you know, that game was, was videoed live. Uh, through that uh, high, the the high school network, and uh, uh, I, I don't have it right here in front of me. But anyway, I, I was able to to cast it up to the TV that I have in my office, and I gotta say that uh, man, those five kids up front, those five kids up front really played well. They, I mean, Chuck, the opening drive, uh, you know, people, and, and I guess, you know, I'm, I'm not giving anything away because you know, all you got to do is watch the film. But, you know, everybody's going, oh, all they're going to do is throw with, you know, with Coach Crompton. They're going to throw it 50 times a game. Well, they'll, they'll, they just went out there and they, and they shoved it down their throat and established the line. And I thought that that, that that and throughout the game, the last two the, the last two drives in the fourth quarter, the scoring drives, we threw balls for touchdown passes. But man, we you know, three times we had fourth down, and to watch those guys, 
come off the ball and 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 get our runners where they're supposed to be. I give all the credit in the world to the five guys up front, Chuck. The, 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 it was really fun to watch when you when you took the time to break it down. Well, you you sent me that video of the game during you know streaming, and I had to watch it this close to see the whole game. Uh, they played well up front. They uh, they you they took a step in fixing the things that they had issues with in the opener. I think that they're just now begin you know finding themselves in in the rhythm in the passing game and those are on the offensive side of the ball and I think they're going to be you know you can do a lot of things offensively if you got a great offensive line and that's really been told many times is that that's one of the three things you got to be great at to win a championship you got to be great at the offensive line you got to be great on defense and you got to be great in the kicking game yep. and so I was impressed with the way they played up front. Um, Stephen Brooks, I think, had an outstanding game. Well, I, I just thought he played outstanding, and and I think uh, the West kid is just he's getting better every game. It's only two games, but you know, he's he's joined a new team. He's got new players. He doesn't know, you know, they haven't really connected yet. You would think, uh, but it looks like they they've you know, a couple of years ahead of the learning curve on that. But I just thought yeah. the way Tuscola flew around on the defensive side of the ball. You know, I know Houston McCracken's on the team, and so does uh, John Offer, the defensive coordinator. But those two played linebacker. And, I mean, they played it flying, you know, like their hair was on fire, and they were flying around when they were Mountaineers. And I see that stamp that uh, – that, uh, Chambers and, and Houston McCracken are, you know, getting these kids the way they were as mothers, and they're playing that way. They may not be the biggest, may not be the strongest and the fastest, but they're going to get to that ball. And when they get to the ball, they got an attitude. That's great for defensive people. They just fly yep. and, and stick, fly and yep. stick. And, um, and, 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 yeah. and like Kimberly just told us here, Miss Bledsoe, hey, the, the – uh, and I go back here when we had to get the ball back, when the Mountaineers had to make plays in the fourth quarter, four big stops, four big drives, four big stops. And yes, the defensive line was the, the defensive lines got after it. The, 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 you know, the freshman defensive back, the sophomore linebacker, uh, the, the, the older guys kind of leading them along back there. So defensively, uh, especially in the fourth quarter, can't say enough great things about the way the kids played and stepped up. So, uh, uh, and they they needed uh, did somebody just win? No, that was somebody trying to. Get it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, they needed probably, probably wanted to put it <laughs> before the season starts. You know what I mean? I got you, brother. <laughs> but they needed that. Hey, look, they they needed to win. To, so, so there wouldn't be those questions. When, when you're going to get the first one? When you're going to do this? Now it's just those. Hey, buckle down, get better every day. Uh, work with that quarterback. Uh, look, Mr. West and and those receivers, and 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 I love me some receivers over there. So, uh, yeah. Did you tight anyway. on ONC uh, ONC? How t was he? Do you know um the kid ONC? Uh huh. Did you get his height? What's his uh, height? I don't. He's at least six four. He's at least okay. six four. It looks yeah. awesome. He's, so we will see, and we'll talk more about the McDowell game in just a minute. And Chuck, let's let's uh let's jump into here. Uh, Polk at West. What's your thoughts, real quick? And they're playing at West, and uh, I'm before you do. I'm going to say I think it's a tighter ball game than people think, but I think that West uh, West wins this football game. Um, correct. Uh, I think West wins. It is going to be a tight football game, but got to see how Polk reacts. They're a good football team, but there there was a lot of energy spent. Uh, last week in that loss to Tuscola. And, you know, West, 
I know they can tote the rock. They got two great running backs, but they're going to have to play defense against this Polk County team because those two guys out there are awesome and um, for Polk. So it could be a, a shootout, but I would think that the toll of having played Tuscola last week is that West comes out victorious. And there's, plus they're home. You know, they're on their own yep. turf. Franklin at Swain. I until Franklin fixes their problem, Swain. You know this might be something like a, a four touchdown win for Swain County. I just, I just don't. You know, Franklin is. It seems like they're getting better offensively. Although you can look at last week and say Franklin held Robbinsville at Robbinsville last week to twenty six points. It's not bad. So. But the Brooks brothers are going to get them playing just in time for conference play. I doubt, I, 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 yeah, the, the, that's a pretty easy statement, right? You know what I mean? They're they're they're, they're great at what they do. Swain on their home turf, you know, they're, they're going to be, you know, Swain on the on the short grass in Bryson City, they're going to be victorious. Uh, Hampton, Tennessee, which is. Uh, Right here near the border, about uh, it's it's east of Elizabethton. You can go the back way to go up to Hampton, Tennessee, by going 19 east, or you can go down 26 to Elizabethton and hang a right. So uh, Hampton, Tennessee, at Pisgah, and in and they went like three deep in, in the playoffs last year. But again, I don't know anything about them. Don't know what co- division or region that they play in in Tennessee. And 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 it's got to be a sparse population where they come from. So I don't know that they would have a ton of kids to choose, you know, to to, to pick the litter. But anyway, Hampton at Pisgah. Um, Hampton is one and one. They uh, they rallied late. They were down six nothing for most of the game, you know, into the second half, and then all of a sudden they um, they got they scored twenty six points to win twenty six six. So Hampton is the unknown. I mean, they can come in and do different things than what you've seen on film. So that, but last, like you said earlier on, is that Pisca had uh, was dialed in. Brett Chapel had his boys dialed in, and to be three and zero and do it on your home field, um, I would suspect that uh, Pisca coming off that offensive display last week against Ica uh, will win this football game. Going away, I think it's at least a two touchdown win for Pisco. And if I can say this, David Kimberly Spalding Blesso, uh, shout out to the defensive line. We got it right down yep. here, absolutely. Yep. Because when you hold Polk County to 56 yards, you know, rushing in a half, I mean, they played great, pressured the quarterback, uh, the run stoppers up there, they play strong gap defense. I mean. You, you're, that front seven, the people on that front line at Tuscola are really talented people. And we neglected to mention that. And that's our omission. But they are very, you know, they are very talented. And, and if they're going to go places this year, they got to have that strong, great defense. And that defensive line is going to have something to say about who wins that championship. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hendersonville at East Henderson. And I, I'm, I'll go back and, and say that I think that East is going to get their first win, and, I, and, and probably beating Hendersonville for them will be as big a win as they can get. But I, I, when you lose your, your guy, your, you, you lose your quarterback the way Hendersonville did in this offseason in that, in that car accident, uh, I just think that uh, – I don't know. Well – East Tenderson, are bigger than football. Well, East Henderson is scoring a lot of points, and they'll continue to score a lot of points. Uh, Hendersonville has struggled, got shut out last week, forty-four to nothing. Um, first game they lost to North Henderson, thirty-one twelve, and so I, uh, you know, and it's played at you know at East Flat Rock, so it's obviously it's going to be an, an all eagle uh, night for the East Henderson. Squad, and I think they they run uh, they win going away in this football game. Here's a game that intrigues me: T.C. Robertson at Smoky Mountain, and I uh, and I know how to spell mountain. I cannot believe I did that. 
M O U. I know how to spell mountain, so everybody leave me alone. That's okay. That's all right. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. Um, Ricky Brindley, coming off, you can you can learn a lot about your team, and you can teach a lot. As Jonathan says, I can tell you, or I can teach you, and he'd rather teach him. And I think Ricky <sighs> teaching his kid, you know, against a good team, what they did wrong. I think is you know they're playing at home, teaching going down there. But just the speed factor, I think, is that they have that – Smokey has that great wide receiver. And I have to – I'd have to say that, you know, TC has the ability to shut him down. Um, and, you know, with the new quarterback that he's dealing with, the quarterback situation, I think TC Robertson, the Rams go in there and, and pick up a win against Smoky Mountain in a hard-fought football game. Yep. And – North Henderson and Owen, and uh, I think this will be over quick. And, uh, uh, you know, you hate it for the kids out there in the Swannanoa Valley because, you know, their tradition out there, uh, you know, it's, well, it's, it's, they've fallen in hard times. Uh, and a lot of the, what's happened out there is a direct reflection of just losing manufacturing because when those plants closed, a lot of things happened out there in the last 20 years, right. you know? So that's what happened to Travis when he went down to Tacoa. And, uh, you know, he, when he first got down there, every, you know, and then those plants started closing and he started losing players. So uh, uh, I think this one will be over pretty quick, Chuck. North Henderson B. Well. Before the season, Brett Chappell uh, made a statement that his uh, surprise or his sleeper team in the Mountain 7 would be North Tennyson. Just the coaching and what players they got back and everything. Thus far, he's become a prophet because North Tennyson's beaten Hendersonville 31-12 and they've beaten Rosman 41-14. And both games, they held that score down. They purposely did. They, they could have run it up. But now they're going in on the road, the first road game of the year, going to Owen. And you would think, if, if is this team really talented? I'm going to I'm going to jump out there with Brett Chappell and say North Tennyson wins big in this football game. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And then uh, at seven o'clock, let me repeat that one more time: seven o'clock kickoff in at McDowell High School. And please, please, please be aware of the traffic on 40. So uh, especially at the 4240 split and uh, get there early. Uh, and uh, hope, hopefully we travel well and uh, it's not going to be 150 degrees this week. Uh, <laughs> it was miserable for those kids last week. But uh, Kickoff is at uh, uh, kickoff is at seven o'clock in McDowell, and we do have an announcement. Chuck, Chuck and I are not going to do our show Thursday night. Uh, Chuck and, and and I will be at uh, McDowell, uh, and we're going to do a live pregame show. And I'm hoping, uh, depending on the internet, we might have to go back to my truck, which has its own little. Uh, uh, Wi-Fi thing, but I'd like to, for us to be on the air at about 540, 545 to do a, a, a good hour and 20 minutes or so of pregame show and looking forward for uh, for us being down there in McDowell County together and watching Tuscola in McDowell County. Now, I say all that to say, Chuck, talk to me what you think, because you know usually on this stuff, I kind of just sit back when it involves the Mountaineers on any prediction. Well, I think McDowell, uh, you know, they, they come into the game 0-2, and, and it has, you know, uh, one of the largest schools in the state. Uh, they're about 1,800, you know, close to 1,800 or over 1,800 students. Um, if I was looking at the eight, I might be like uh, over 1,700. But if they have a large team, you know, the thing that they you may want to expect is they're trying and wear your – defense out you know they can keep sending large guys they can just keep sending guys in and running them deep and everything trying to wear them out if you're studying any of the films you know is that um, you know that may be the only thing that they could try I just 
this game, uh, I'm giving Dow McDowell some opportunity in it, you know, just trying to tell people that, you know, there's a chance, but, you know, the head coach at Tusco thinks on a different plane. I know that. And this is, you are, you, you have got to be prepared for the unknown when he comes in to make adjustments because you're going to see things you haven't seen on film. And he may, that may be the whole entire come in because everything's based off the concept. He can run different things out of formation. So Tuscola, like I said, they're finding, they got weapons on the, on the outside that they can throw to. And if they get up on McDowell, uh, it could be a long night for the Titans. And I think Tuscola wins this game looking at maybe 37-12, 37-14. I think that's where we go with that. Now, again, I ask you as I ask you the last two weeks, okay, are you talking with your head or are you talking with your heart? And that's a fair question. Right. Uh, I am talking with my head. I, I do hope things are positive for Jonathan at uh, at Tuscola. But at the same time, last week, uh, I called and told you, I said, I said 42 to 22 would be the score. And it was 25, and and um, you know it's not, Polk was better than what I thought, but I didn't think Polk would get more than 22 points. So I, I think that the offense is gelling, the timing on passing routes, the running the football, they're able to do and attack the weaknesses of defense. So they're going to put a lot of points on. If you're going to play Tuscola with Jonathan Crompton, you can't play. You don't expect to play in these. 10, seven games, you're going to have to score some points. You're going to have to be able to score a lot of points. And if you're not apt at that, which McDowell had trouble putting points on up at, um, at Mitchell last week, uh, 35 to six, I think it was, was the final score. So, you know, you can't, you can't go up against Tuscola and think, well, we're going to get into a defensive battle because no matter what, you know, your defense, you have weaknesses and they will be exploited and they will be exploited for points. And I think at least 37 points for Tuscola Friday night against McDowell. So, so I'm thinking with my head. Okay. I'm just asking because that is, is that not a fair question? Sure. Very fair. Okay. So now, uh, but now I won't be making a pick come Friday the 13th in October. No. I'll just sit back and go, whoever wins. <laughs> I got peeps over there. I like, you know. They... <laughs> so, I want, yeah, where's your, that, that gorgeous, that gorgeous hat of yours? Where, where is that gorgeous hat? In the, in the, uh, I was on my end table uh, next to the, you know, my chair where I'm watching my 80, 85 inch screen. You know, at 85 inches, you can watch, I watch football, baseball, and it's like you can see the beads of sweat coming down. It's awesome. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, any final thoughts before we move on and talk a little bit about college football, uh, uh, in the uh, mountain football, not just mountain seven, but anything that, that, that uh, kind of pops in your head and, and it just surprised you. Uh, two weeks in. Right. Uh, Pisgah, West Henderson, and North Henderson are 2-0. and oh. Tuscola and Smoky Mountain are 1-1. One and one. Yes, it's early in the season. It's non-conference. So really, it's just trying to find out what you are. And Franklin and East Henderson are 0-2. Oh the surprise to me is North Henderson better than what we expected and Franklin worse than what we expected. That, it, to me, is the surprise. You know, the worst case scenario we thought is that at this point, Tuscola would be one and one. We thought Tus uh, Pisco would be two and all along with West Henderson. So the same, the, the group of five that we have is my, you know, North Henderson's jumped into that group of five as a contender for the title of, of the Mountain Seven. I think Franklin has kind of, you know, dropped out of it and uh, will replace North Henderson down at the bottom of the standings. And But, they're you know, they're going to get better, and they're going to, 
you know, they'll, they'll be better next year. Get the experience now. So the same, but the five teams that are in that hunt will be Pisgah, Tuscola, West Henderson, North Henderson, and Smoky Mountain. Now, after okay. this week, you may, we may be different. You know, we may see, okay, that team was the same thing is that we know it's always been the case where, you know, you can, after week three, you know, the pretenders and, and the contenders are, who are they? I agree, but then I'm going to disagree a little bit because pre-conference schedules are so different. Right. Because remember, remember what I know, put. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Remember what I sent to you. The Mountain Seven records against the opposing uh, records. You know, so when you can look at West Henderson is two and zero, but uh, their opponents are zero and four. That kind of gives you an idea that they're so far they've played a weak conference. So as you look at that, you start to say, and I know where you're going with that is, and that could be the case. But um, I always look at I have a composite schedule, and I'm always looking at the records of the people that you're playing. If you're playing tough teams and, you know, they've got winning records and we'll know that mid season, we'll kind of figure that out is okay. The non-conference has helped them the not, or, or it's, it's hurt them because if you play a weak uh, non-conference schedule and you don't have any choice, once you sign these things, teams, you know, because they're high yeah. school, you, it's their neighborhood against our neighborhood. And that's yeah. the way it should, be. but uh, you just don't have any uh, control over that is that, um, you know, you, you just non-conference can help you or can hurt you depending on the strength that you play. So, you know, I think, you, you know, what game, be, huh? You, you know, a game I'd pay money to see. What's and I, it just popped in my head as we were, we were sitting here talking. I would love to see Jefferson County, Georgia and Tuscola. Is that where Nolan is? That's for coach Nolan. <laughs> With I would pay to see that. I would just pay to see warm ups to watch those those two uh, act like well, you know, I, I'm going to stay in my normal routine, and I, I would love I would pay to see that. Number one, I think it'd be a great football game, but number two, just to, just that would be pretty cool for 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 me to see. To see. Now, my understanding, <laughs> Owen was at Tuscola. He did the chicken dance after in the locker room. Uh, after a win, correct? I heard that. I heard that and for a long time. Does uh, eight uh, counts from Crompton is what I mean by I eight? I have no <laughs> idea. Okay, so there would be no chicken dance dance off. Yeah, I don't. That I don't. I don't, I don't have a clue about any of that. I, uh, I, my inside information with him is pretty much, hey, Dad. Uh, yeah. You think y'all could come get my car? Uh, it sounds like it needs brakes, and you think you could take it down there to the shop and get mom to come switch it out. That's about the extent of my, you know, I, I don't have any inside information. I'm just, you know, I, I try just like you do, but we fail. I know it. Miserably. But you won't quit. That's what's so great about Saturdays. Oh, I don't ever but, quit. Uh, so anyway, don't forget that we'll be on the air about 5.45, I hope around 5.45, 45 on Friday to uh, to do our uh, live pregame show for McDowell County. I can't tell you exactly where we're going to be, but we're going to be down there somewhere and get everybody prepared and ready for uh, Tuscola and McDowell. Now, Chuck, before we start talking about college football, just I'd like everybody, if they could, go to CromptonAuto.com, look at our inventory. Uh, fill out the easy online application. And if we don't call you back, we've had a little com some kind of computer issue, right, Janet? That all the apps aren't coming to us for some reason. So you call and say, hey, is my app there? And we'll follow up and make sure that it's where it's supposed to be for you. So uh, CromptonAuto.com, 1256 Deadwood Road in beautiful Waynesville, North Carolina. Now, college football. You sent a text today that literally made me go, I just don't think Chuck knows anything about anything anymore. He's lost his mind. <laughs> because, it, and let, let me quote this. Can, can I quote this one, the one part of it? Yes, yeah. I won't do it unless you yeah, Okay. 
Prediction. You give me a give me a chance to explain. Yes, but I'm going to read it first. Prediction. Colorado will start 0 and 5. They might get and get one win this season. Uh, Coach Prime has completely turned over the roster, and they may be worse than when he arrived. The Buffs' only win could be against Stanford or Arizona State. Dot 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 dot. My future, my future, and I'm not going to tell you. Well, I would because you and I are going to do a futures bet. Okay. Okay. My futures bet for the college football season. Lloyd, I know you're listening down there in the bayou. LSU will win the Natty. You've lost your mind. Okay. <laughs> number one, number one. I know they did pretty well last year, but I will tell you that guy is over his head coaching in the SEC. And and I'll go ahead. Let's start our argument now. Okay, go he, ahead. He is just. I can't stand to hear him talk. I, uh, <laughs> he just can't. And they will not win the national championship. The national championship will come from the SEC, but I don't. Look, they're going to be good, but I don't think it's going to be them. But I don't think it's going to be Georgia. Well, remember the Saturday Night Live with Ackroyd? Never mind. I won't go there. Um, I really do uh, on the LSU is that I give – I got a lot of people. I got Alabama people, particularly John Truitt. Who I give grief to. I'll make stuff up just to, you know, poke the bear a little bit. I, you know, I told him the other you know, about a week ago. I think Alabama will be the the, the national championship because they got the goat, and he's you know he had a a, a subpar season for the goat. Um, yeah, Georgia, but they got a new quarterback. They're gonna Georgia, Georgia and uh, Alabama have got. New quarterbacks. We don't even know who's quarterback in that Alabama. And look, you're playing in the SEC. You cannot, you know, have an inexperienced guy and you can have a good season. But I don't think Georgia's plug and play right now. You know, they can plug in a quarterback uh, and then they can go win a national championship. So I think, you know, I thought about Alabama, but then I started looking at the schedule and then I thought, you know, Kelly has been everywhere he's gone. I mean, you should see him when he was at Grand Valley State up in Michigan, D2 winning national championships. He's been a winner everywhere he went. He stayed longer than what he should have at Notre Dame. And I think yes. Kelly, I think the opposite of what you think of Kelly. I love Kelly, even his fake Cajun accent. But I think it's going to go Tigers at the end of the day. And they probably will be playing – USC. Could be. Could be. But but I, I think I think the national champion is, is gonna be God. I just threw up a little bit in my own mouth. I just had a minor heart attack, had a mini stroke before I even let this come. Oh. God. I'd love to say that it's going to come from Knoxville, but I don't know. But I think I think not, we're going to be pretty good again. But if I had to say here today, uh, on the 29th of August, I got to uh, – Say it. Roll Tide. God, it just makes me <laughs> sick. My, my It hurts my soul to say that. I could. But they're going to – look, they're going to be good. The guy, you know – he is what he is. I, I don't know that he's the GOAT because I still think that the GOAT to me is probably Coach Bryant. That's just because of I'm 61 and that's the way I you know where I grew up. But he is a phenomenal coach and he is a and I have to give him credit. He has adapted to the times. Right. He has adapted to the fast paced offense. If you'll remember about eight or nine years ago, he raised hell about that. Remember? Right. About the and and but he's adapted to that. He's adapted to the to the NIL. He's adapted to the transfer uh, transfer portal, and uh, and and you got to give him credit. Uh, my pick is subject to change. I'm not you know, but but as I sit here today, uh, and and, and but you, I think they're going to come out of the West. 
And something tells me that that the Vols are going to come out of the East because besides Georgia, who can compete with Georgia or Tennessee in the East? As we stand here right now today, who can right. compete with those two teams? No. You tell me. Georgia and Tennessee are the two top dogs in the East. Everybody else are little dogs. They're barking. My point that I'm going to finish on this was to let me explain was Please. I believe sitting here that Alabama is going to win the national championship. I told John Truett, my friend, John Truett, he's a Tuscola Mountaineer, and we love jabbing at each, uh, each but everybody. And he's going to be on with us next week, probably, yeah. right? On our, yeah, go ahead. Covered up this week, but we're going to have them, and everybody will love them, those that don't know them. But John is, uh, is a diehard Alabama man, and but when well, everybody I, has their fault, that I'm not going to go make a bet four to one on a futures bet. Yeah, I'm not going to get that kind of return. So being twelve to one on LSU, I thought, well, don't they have a shot? I think LSU has a, a, a legitimate shot of winning the national championship. LSU, Alabama, Georgia are the three teams, and USC are the three, te- uh, four teams that uh, will have, and I count USC as the Big Ten now. So, <laughs> the but Big anyway, 40. Ohio State's got a new quarterback. Georgia's got a new quarterback. Alabama's going to have a new quarterback. All right, hold on a minute. Where are they playing? Where are LSU and Alabama at, playing? At Alabama. Advantage now, Alabama. Now, when I told John that LSU was going to win the natty, uh, he was silent. And he was trying to determine whether I was serious or I was trying to poke at him because we poke at each other. He usually will throw facts into the argument, and that will shut me up about the Big Ten or the ACC. But he says, I'm going to give you something you haven't heard in a long time. I said, what's that? And I heard dial tone. He hung up on me. <laughs> he hung up on me. He hung up well, on me. You know, you know, I, that's the beauty now. With I don't take it as serious, near like I did. Now, you know, now the, the things on Friday night again, I would probably hang up on you. <laughs> but, but. But I'm, I am really, really uh, – you know, we talk about the winning and the losing and the championship and all that good stuff. But but I will tell you that and, – and, and this is, a, you know, this is to me what I'm about to say. This is not anything to do with winning and losing. Right. Uh, man, I think they are destroying college athletics. Right. Uh, Look, I, I'll I'll never forget uh, when we were going through the recruiting thing with our son, and all these people were coming at you and coming at you and coming at you, and when Notre Dame came and uh, Virginia came, uh, you, of course it was all about football, and they talked football. But but they but most of these schools and I just use those as the example. They were saying, "Hey, this is what we're going to talk about academically." And and when you can you when you come to school here, you're going to go to class, and you're going to get your degree, and you're going to do this this and this and this and this and this. <laughs> and at Tennessee, he went to class and he earned his degree. Right. So. And all this stuff about all the money, all the realignment, all this NIL, all this transfer stuff. Who's talking about the education? Well, it's who's talking about all the kids that are never going to play at the next level? Answer me that, Batman. You know what I mean? I mean, right. just it, that that does frustrate me. I love the games. There's nothing like Saturday in the SEC or college football or Mars Hill, North Carolina. Right. David, if you recall the conversation in answering your question, is that when they started, this NIL came out of California. And I said, if this NIL deal, you know, this crap starts, it will be the destruction because you're putting, you're, you're 
uh, basing on the honesty and integrity of college football coaches. David, there's not a lot of honest and you know coaches with integrity and ethics and morals. And, and it wasn't a year and it got out of hand. That's all it took. You can't talk academics when you're paying a kid six figures. How are you going to make him go to class? He's paying six. You can pay him six figures. Okay. And I still, to this day, think it was a, a scam to cover up. Now it's legal to give them this big time money, but a scam to cover up the problems we had, remember, with basketball and all of a sudden these schools were getting caught with signing bonuses uh, with kids coming out of high school. They're still they're, they're doing that. Texas A&M did that. So I think it was a, a ploy to say, look, if we were to cut people loose and ban them from college athletics because they were cheating by paying kids sign on bonuses, we would have we probably have to shut some of this thing down, if not most of it down. There's a problem. Yeah. So it's hard to talk af- academics because that's hard when you go to college. Inner city boy coming out of Flint, Michigan, it struggled for me. I was not, they did not prepare me in an inner city school. I had to have help. And then by the second year, it was on my own. I could do it. But those first two years, I was thinking, I am not going to make this. So the bottom line is, is that you can't talk, you can't, talk academics anymore it's talking about this it's all about money everything's about money now in the college now here's my point i say that i agree with you that they're destroying it but it's our reaction to it may not mean a hill of beans but no. we can criticize it we can stand i'm a, i know you and i know me is that we will we'll be one person standing up against the mob because we'll stand for something right and so it's, we'll watch the games huh yep but we, but we will watch the games. We'll and watch. We will be, you know, and that's the stuff that, you know, if you know we'll, uh, fans' opinion at, at a time. We'll write in criticism. We'll, you know, we'll make arguments. Call radio shows. We'll, we'll do that kind of stuff and say, look, I mean, this is this is not right, and we're, you know, but we, if it's worth something to us, it's worth the fight. And I damn. Think, Worth the fight for you and I to just if yeah. we'll talk about it. reaction to this. Yep. Now I have another question. All right. You have to explain what is what why are you wearing that shirt now? Look at the screen. Well, I haven't thrown away everything. This came out of a box. Okay. And I had washed all the stuff getting ready for football season. I got Michigan State stuff because of my niece, Mary Catherine, was all Big Ten and women's soccer. Um and that shirt was there, and I thought I'd put it on. And the other ones I had to fold and hang up, and I said, I'll get to that tomorrow, being lazy. So I wore this. Didn't realize we got, when I got here, I went, oh, crap. I'm wearing Michigan, and, and I'm also going to Wake Forest game on Thursday. So yeah. I like good programs. I like good programs. I like Tennessee when Jonathan was there. Notice how I said that. <laughs> I like Janet. Janet was there. Janet's over here beside me. She just snarled her nose and shook her head. Yeah. But uh, so all this is subject to change as far as our predictions. Let me get back to that for a second. Our predictions. And uh, I'm really looking forward to having Lloyd on and, and having Truett on and having John Taylor on and having folks with different perspective as the season goes. And we can have, you know, seven or eight folks on here with us that we can kind of, uh, you know, tell them how wrong they are because we were right. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm right most of the time. I'm not right all the time. Yeah, because, again, I still can't say the word, and I haven't said it, but if I had to predict, it would be that team in those uh, – uh, Tuscaloosa. They have, they have a really – I admire the fact that they, they have uh, – Pretty good, good uniforms. They're not, they're not, they're not Tennessee uniforms, but they're okay. If you're a fan, now I I have a nickname for that team up in Columbus, and it's a yeah, you can't, yeah, you. But I also say Ohio. I don't say the second part of it. You know, there are some state <laughs> universities, but I am, uh, I won't give them that the full name, and. You know, the Golden Domers. I won't say that name, too. 
but you know, you can't say roll tide or the tide. You don't have oh, to say God, no. family. No. no. Call them just make call them look a lot of a, a lot of things as you as you get older don't bother you like they did. But okay. but oh it just that makes me physically ill. Oh, oh gosh. Oh it's <laughs> but anyway, uh real quick, we got about five minutes. Yeah. Uh please everyone tune in uh this same time or, or the same places you're tuning in now, Friday night, we're going to have a really good pregame show. And uh, I, I'm excited about that, to, that we're going to be down there together and be able to watch the ball game. And, and if things go uh, and we were able to do the, the, the technology, uh, we might have a, about a 10 minute post game, kind of ev- let everybody know how it went on Friday, win, lose, or draw. Because if you do this stuff, when you lose, you got to you got to take it on the chin and do it as well as when you win. Right. And uh, we're willing to do that. So hopefully we don't lose much. But anyway, uh, Major League Baseball, uh, Seattle is on fire. Division leader. We called that last week. We called it last week. And – the two best records in the American League at this point now are Baltimore. Well, the best three, Baltimore, Tampa, and Seattle. And Seattle is coming quickly. Uh, but I still say, well, I shouldn't say that. We the Baltimore, we lost our closer, to, and he's going to have to probably have Tommy John surgery. And that's a big loss because that kid was, was something else. But uh, – I still think Baltimore and and Seattle are the two teams right now to beat for the American League pennant. And who would have said that in April? Well, not that I'm a jinx, but you do recall that I said Baltimore has avoided the long term or you know uh, long term IL stints, and they've you know no serious injuries. And then two nights later, that we lose the we lose the closer, and so it puts our bet on future bet on Baltimore in jeopardy. And I say that with Miss uh, Miss Crompton sitting next to you because of the time that I text, he's going to set the record for consecutive passes without an interception and boink oh. off the kid's head. No sooner I did that and he gets picked and all of a sudden <laughs> I turn my phone off and turned it off and went, oh no. And all I could do yeah. after the game, I could hear chuck you know, yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, look, at our Braves are, are still playing well. Right. The Dodgers are coming. I don't know that the Braves are as clear cut, straight run to the World Series as we thought it would be two weeks ago. The Dodgers are playing well, but man alive, do not, do not sleep on the Milwaukee Brewers. They're nine of their last 10. Right. They uh, they've got one of the best two or three managers in baseball. They got really good players, and uh, you know they're, they're winning the Central Division. So don't overlook Milwaukee. Right, they're clicking, and uh, I think in the National League you got obviously the the class of the league is is Atlanta and then uh, L A. But L A. lost another closer. They just get. Kershaw back, and then they lost Goslin to Tommy John. And I said, what is collective yeah. going on in baseball is the people, you know, all these guys, you know, Syndergaard, he, I got two things to get off my chest. Syndergaard, they traded to Cleveland late January, and they and Cleveland releases them after a bad outing. And then Giolito, the Angels brought in Giolito to help keep Otani there, and Giolito's been just rocking every start and they just released them and they, they gave away a player in equal two players in equal caliber for to get Giolito and they released them. I mean, crazy. IL and, and DFA, those two things are amazing. And uh, the Yankees uh, got uh, released Donaldson today. They still owe him $50 million and they told him (laughs) we'd rather pay you not to be here. (laughs) That's about it. So, You know, I mean, hey, pay me, throw me in the briar patch. I'm okay. Throw me in the briar patch. I'll, I, I, you know, just just pay me the fifty. Yeah, 
So, so you know, uh, Major League Baseball. We've had I've had more fun because of what our, our future futures bet and following it every day, and it's been it's been a blast. Uh, now, if they start losing, if the Orioles start losing or something, and, and I don't see anything happening to the Braves to keep them at least from the NLCS. I mean, they're really good. Okay, uh, David. And, uh, I'm here and there for Baltimore. They might blow a close, uh, you know, blow a, uh, a save. But that team's still intact. That's the same team that will mug you offensively, and it's the same team that gets solid, consistent pitching. And they play defense. They're fine. They're fine. They'll miss the – One-to-one, oh. and it's one-to-one one in the bottom of the fifth, two runners on and one out, and the Orioles are – they can squeak across. And, and your guy is at the plate. My guy, he is a, a angel. He is the greatest, and that is Audley Rushman. I mean to tell you this, I wish Detroit could trade for him. I just, the guy is a generational catcher. He is. He's a generational yeah. catcher. Yeah. Hit on both sides of the plate for power, and he's got a respectable average. And boy, today I tell you what, they were talking about Cal Raleigh, the boy that grew up down there in Smoky Mountain High School, uh, one of the leaders on the hey, Seattle. Yeah. And, and he has been I, raking it lately. And that's because he's a catcher, trained catcher. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, you know, he was trained by a good one. Uh, his, and, and, but anyway, I, maybe we can have Daddy on one day. Maybe. Maybe we can get Todd on here one day. We'll have a good time with that. So anyway, Chuck, I'm gonna we're gonna get out of here. Uh we'll see everybody about 5 40 or so on Friday night from McDowell County High School. Uh, and that's in Marion, North Carolina, as we'll uh we'll we'll go down there uh, and a uh, big test. Big, big test for the Mountaineers. Oh, look at your shirt. That's the big that's the big 10 plus 40. Yeah, well, you know, that's where it stands right now. Big 10 plus eight, you know, they <laughs> Big Ten, but we got that little old farm college out there in Lincoln, Nebraska. You know, Mark McCracken's a big fan of that. And that's all he sees is this, this shirt right here. Every time Nebraska plays Michigan, he just put a thing out there. Explain the shirt you have on. It's called. Winners. That's right. Because, called winners. because what's that? Those that stay. Will be champions. What do they say? They Those say that stay will be champions. That's right. Well, so back. we'll see you guys Friday night. Thank you for taking the time to, to indulge the two of us. Uh, this, this is this is so much fun. And uh, Chuck, uh, I'll see you Friday down there, and uh, we'll hopefully come home with a victory. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. See you guys Friday from McDowell County. Thank you for tuning in. This is David and Chuck. We'll see you next time. All right. Thank you, Chucky. All right, bud.